Hello everyone, my name is Ken and that is Tash. And it sounds like you can't hear me. And I can barely hear what Ken's saying because he's going robot on me. Oh no, luckily I'm recording this, so I win. Also, Tash scared the crap out of me because we were staring at the berry plant growing and then suddenly it just died. Hello? There we go. Oh, for fuck. What the hell happened there? I don't know, because on Discord, everything is flicking between red and green, and that's usually not a good sign. And that was happening again. Yeah, I had to restart Discord. Whoops. I don't know what's going on anymore. Everything's we'll... just gone weird on me. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did I do with all my stuff? Oh, that's in there. Never mind. Okay, we have a bunch more chilies yeah. to sell. Hey, okay. hello, audience. Welcome back. Um, everything broke <laughs> for a second. Sorry about the minor hiccup there, people. Uh, everything just kind of went belly up for no good reason uh, that we can determine. Yep, but we fixed it like we always do. We fixed it like mild idiots. Uh, actually, we did nothing. We just restarted everything and hoped and prayed right, to Steve it. that it works. It's kind of not working, because you sound like somebody put you on fast forward. Oh, that's normal. Good point. I'm just hoping I can discern what you're saying in among Discord cutting in and out. And after this recording, I will have to go and fix Discord. Ah, uh, because my end seems fine. My well, end seems fine. At least your audience can understand me. That's not funny. Why is funny. that not funny? I thought it was funny. We have different humor styles. Alright, done. Now I'm just gonna sit here and fish. That sounds oh, like yeah. such a fun episode. No, I no, think no, I'm, I'm gonna join you. you. Please don't do something productive and mildly useful with your life. Nope. I'm a YouTuber. Being a Mildly. YouTuber is useful. Do you know the amount of people who are use YouTubers, YouTube videos to help get over depression by giving them something to strive for each day? Yes, we are those people. Yeah, I'm hoping to be. I don't care if I don't do anything else with my life, but if I'm able to make one person not kill themselves because they look forward to my videos every day, I've done my job right. Tasha's videos are love, Tasha's videos are life. I have a sunfish. Uh, my, my videos are sleeping with your wife. That's very possible. Dash's videos I'm are not to be trusted. Sorry. <laughs> I love that you're just caught in that pose. But the same thing happens to you. I also love the fact that I can just yeah. sit here playing a game and smoke as well. That's awesome. Smoking being a relative term. I got a he Nautilus vapes because fossil. He doesn't have to do... Because he doesn't have to fulfill so many nerdy stereotypes already. Oh, shut up, you. You know you love me, baby. Of course I do. Literally all I'm doing is fishing so that I can get money. Like, we need to get 25k, which means we need to get approximately... Like 18,000 more, so I'm just fishing for the rest of summer. Well, I can because accidentally else drop a fish behind you a it's couple a of hundred task. times. That makes us a, quite a bit of dosh. You could. Could. It's gonna duplicate though, and then my audience will spam me you with could, love but it messages work half again. The time, it seems, so. This is going to be a boring episode. Oh, yes. So let's tell stories from the deep. So come, Captain Tash, the excellent, excellent writer. Please regale us one of your tales. Or make one up off the top of your head. I actually do do that on occasion. Not for the series, but for other things. Hmm. Uh, also, I'll be linking really Tash's Tumblr. 
I'll be linking Tasha's Do you want Tumblr. a recount of some of the stupid shit I've seen in retail? Sure. Because retail stories, I can actually join yeah, you Yeah, I do do writing on occasion, but lately I've been trying to write a novel. I'm gonna change the Discord server again, because you're just going on fast forward like crazy occasionally and starting to freak me out. Yeah, don't be scared. Ken? I can hear you again. Ken? Yes, hi. And I can hear you and you sound decent. All right, excellent. Now, right. I couldn't hear the answer to the question. Do you want re do you want made-up stories or retail stories? A uh, couple retail of retail stories. stories. Because that's a passion right. both of us can share. Did I tell you a Did I tell you about the um I can't really I can't really call or something without giving it away. Did I ever tell you about the time that my entire soul whipped around at a possible racist comment? That... No, you have not. That sounds like the perfect thing to discuss. Alright, so... <laughs> I'm stocking the... I'm stocking the whole Christmas section. Hold on a second. Fish, 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 fish. Give me the fish, give me the fish, give me the fish. Come on. There we go. Alright, so I'm stocking Christmas section with this... With like two other people because it needs stocking. This is during my first year in retail. And all I hear is this like little girl arguing with her mother and I just screw it and tune it out. Then all of a sudden, everyone else in the entire like half the store could hear this girl. She screams, but mommy, the black ones all look gross! <laughs> so all of us whip around wondering what the hell she's talking about. Because nobody's heard the argument at this point. We've just heard her yell that in the middle of a crowded store. And then and of course everybody jumps pointing... straight to racist. Yes, and she's just standing there pointing at a black Christmas tree. You've got and black Christmas the... trees? Yeah, we have um great we have green ones, light green ones, white ones, and black ones. Black ones honestly don't look that good. And I do agree with the little girl here that they really don't look good for black Christmas trees. Don't get me wrong, the white ones looked horrible as well. Like they were fing snow white. It was horrific. Kids, but this year we oh having God, a black every Christmas. <laughs> Everyone just whipped around at a store, and I'm fairly sure one of my managers got whiplash from turning around so quickly. It was the most hysterical thing I've ever seen. But it is the funniest that thing. Poor mother, that poor mother just realized what her kid said, looked around to see like half a store just staring at her going, how did you raise your kid this way? Because half of them couldn't see what the kid was pointing at. And that she seems just like, like a... grabs this, like, probably maybe four-year-old girl, and bolts out the store. Of course you have to, she'll Poor be killed. Mother. But kids, Poor kids mother. tend to say whatever's on their mind. Kids are so honest and brutal. Like, kids are brutal. Oh yeah, I love kids for that reason. What I also love about kids is that I am a complete nerd, and I love a lot of little childish things like comic books and Pokemon and stuff. So I'm able, whenever a kid's got like a Pokemon game or a Pokemon cards, I ask them about it. And I've outright gotten a mother asking me, like, how can you relate to your my kid better than I can? I'm just like, we play the exact same games. Yes, we We're are able giant to talk man about kids. these games. <laughs> yeah, I carried on a conversation with what must have been like a six-year-old boy about his favorite Pokemon because he had just bought, I think it was Pokemon X and Y at the time. It was his first game and he was just excited about it. He was talking to his mother about it. And I recognized what he meant by certain game terms, so I started talking to him about it. Which mm. the mother was relieved about because it means she didn't have to hear her son prattle on about something she just didn't understand. And didn't give a shit about yeah, but she's just standing there looking at me, like a 24-year-old guy talking to like this six-year-old kid on an equal level, and she's just going, how the earth do you... I love non-gaming parents, they just don't get it. It's that was so hysterical. dopey, it's the funniest thing. It's less dopey, it's more that they not only don't know what their kid's going on about, but they don't even try, they just think it's a kid being a kid, they don't try and relate to it. And it's one of the things that I'm going to love about being a parent because I'm going to try and do that. Because it's like one of the things that my parents couldn't do. Like, Dad does try. I will outright give him that. My father does try. My mom never really tried. She did get into Pokemon, though, and it was always kind of funny to us. Uh, my mom only got into the first 150, and if I say got into, she couldn't name them. 
That's a. <laughs> Actually, I I was absolutely loving it. There's this. Oh, she's probably in her early fifties at this point, like late forties, early fifties. Is very motherly woman at our store, and her and I get along famously. And it was freak because she works in the um in the games section of my store. So she knows what releases she are, and she's a massive gamer herself. And me and her were talking about the new Batman game that was coming out at some point, because we both loved Arkham City, and we were excited for it. And everyone around, and keep in mind, that, like we've got a, people from her age down at my store and her age up at my store. Everyone around us was just going, how the living day, like, what the f*** are you two talking about? Because we've got a woman who's probably old enough to be my mother discussing something on equal terms with me, and nobody seems to get that. But that's so something that doesn't happen too often. No. Actually, here's the thing. I met the. I actually met the woman who is the head of the uh, battle, the largest battlefield gaming group in Australia, and she's probably in her mid fifties, and she plays hours a day, usually at night when her kids have gone to sleep running this thing and playing with others and trying to make it a more of a f friendly atmosphere. And it's the funniest thing, because her and I were just talking about the new Battlefield 1, and no one around us had any clue what we were talking about. <laughs> Seems like being a housewife thing. is no longer safe. Nope. But she ran this. It's like, I think she said she got into it because her kids were into it, and so she tried to find out what they liked about the game. So she got into it, and she, now she helps run, her and her husband, this massive gaming community. That's actually so cool. Works. I think it's, yeah, I think it's really cool. And I can't do anything because I'm completely out of energy. <laughs> I'm pretty much out and as well, so I shall can, we? And now I can only walk. Very, very slowly. Well, you can run around the place, but I have to walk. And I am selling like chest. a bajillion fishes. Yeah. I, I'm going to go put this, uh, what's it called, the broken CDs, in one of our chests. Uh, yes, so when we can make the recycling machine, we shall do that. Yeah. It's one of the things that I love about gaming, is that gaming does not give a shit about what you are in real life. All it does is care about what you can do in the game. Exactly. It's a pure meritocracy, and I utterly adore that. For that reason. That's, that's for people who want to escape their actual shitty lives, like walking into a virtual one that you can 100% control, that has to be the appeal oh, yeah. of video games. The major appeal for me, especially during multiplayer gaming, is that anyone can do it. And games are so ubiquitous nowadays that you can kind of, like, everyone plays them. Like, for goodness sake, my mom played Bejeweled a ton to the point where she got really amazingly good at it. And introduced the people in, I think it was a reading group to her, and they liked it. And they were all, like, 70, 80-year-old women, and they did like it. Because it's just one of those games that you can pick up and play for a little bit, and it's just it's something to distract yourself for a while. Very but nice then you and get casual. like the proper the proper gaming communities, like my server, for instance, like my Discord server. We all game together on occasion. We all try and support one another, and for the creators, we'll all critique each other's work when asked. Like very, Vulcan very used true. that on a Vulcan used that a couple of times in order to get the uh, his channel trader up and together, and a couple of other things that we've critiqued and helped him for it. I just, I love games, man. Games are seriously the best thing. Yes, I fully agree. All right, well, yeah. that was an entire episode of just me talking, so... <laughs> that was actually quite a nice break, and that also would break up the session. So thank you guys so much for watching. This session has actually been very productive and very fun, considering Tash is bored. Um, <laughs> go... Well, just, like, the fishing and foraging and crops and stuff I've got to do are all gone, and I don't have anything to do for five days. Well, go stalk Tash so you can see the other things he does, other than just be my darling on my farm. Well, our farm. The farm. A farm. A farm. <laughs> we will see you all By next way, time. It's literally called A farm, because at the start we couldn't, we couldn't figure out, and just said, just call it a farm! <laughs> Yes, we were spending too much time creating our characters. Okay, but we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Have a very good day.